Hello everyone. We're at topic three on statutory interpretation. So what we'll be covering today is that we'll be covering on the creation of a statute, uh, what's the purpose of having a statute and the relevance of it and judges' role to interpret the statute, as well as on the purpose of the statutory interpretation. So let's start with the application of statutory interpretation. So who applies it? So well, because whenever you have a statute, you need uh, someone to interpret it so that other people can refer to the interpretation. Sometimes legislation can be very specific or sometimes it can be very broad where, whereby it becomes very unclear. So you're not sure how to apply it. So hence, uh, whenever there's any circumstances that goes to court, that's where the judge will use its role to interpret the relevant statute. But then there is a question, can a statute be changed or repealed? So that's a section that will be covering under constitutional law, but the answer is correct, yes. But it cannot be changed or repealed by case law itself. It can be done uh, through um, parliament itself. All right, so the implication of where a statute be changed or repealed, uh, it has its uh, consequences. Uh, so whereby the new act or the new legislation would repeal the old act or old legislation. So let's look at the passage of a bill so that you have a clearer understanding on the uh, passing of the legislation. So when we talk about legislation, statute on an act, it essentially means the same thing. Uh, people tend to use it interchangeably. Uh, so if you're referring to an act, so essentially it means it's a legislation as well as a statute. So the passing of a bill, it's actually one step before it becomes an act. So you need to have a bill that need to go through the processes where it starts at House of Commons uh, and subsequently House of Lords. And once both houses agrees to the passage of a bill, uh, then it will receive the royal assent. So once you have received the royal assent, that's where you can say that an act has been implemented. So why there is a need for statutory interpretation? The reason being is that there are thousands of cases that goes to court which requires judges to deliberate uh, on the matter and come up with the decision. So in order for judges to deliberate or decide on a particular matter, so judges need to refer to an act. So you can't just decide based on a person's consciousness or common sense. But then, um, many disputes that come to court requires the interpretation of a particular meaning. Sometimes it's just not straightforward, especially when it involves uh, technical terms under the Taxation Act or Finance Act, for example, then it becomes more complicated. So there is a need for judges to fill in this gap, provide proper interpretation so that in future cases, if there are any similar cases, then uh, the future judges can refer to the previous decision that has already been made. So the examples for the need of statutory interpretations are right in front of you, uh, whereby I've laid down a few examples where judge can interpret a particular statute when there is a failure for legislation to provide a specific point. For example, an act, usually they have a section which provides a definition definitions. So sometimes the definition itself is not clear. So you have a particular word. Let's say, how do you define a mother? Uh, but that particular act does not provide any definition. So judge is one of the judges' role to interpret what does it mean by a mother. So you also have broad term. Sometimes the term can be very broad, so it becomes confusing because uh, it has it can attract many meanings. It can become very vague as well because you're not clear on how to interpret a particular term. Uh, you also have an example of ambiguity uh, when the term used in the legislation itself is not clear. Uh, there are few cases uh, that you need to read up on. For example, there's a case which concerns the interpretation of the word passenger. Uh, because English law consists of a lot of old law, 
So when you have an old law, which needs to be applied in 21st century, uh, that will cause uh, a, a confusion. You also have uh, an example of drafting error. Sometimes when let's, a bill goes through House of Commons, House of uh, Lord, uh, so there's, uh, there's an oversight by the legislative itself, by the members of parliament on the interpretation of a particular words. So because of that, uh, then there's judges' role to clarify on the meaning of definition. So you also have an example of new developments uh, when we talk about, for example, satellite dishes or Wi-Fi, uh, we have cases which concerns uh, who can conduct uh, an abortion because those days only doctors or medical practitioners can conduct or carry out an abortion process. Uh, but nowadays, because you have nurses who have always been assisting uh, doctors, this is also a qualified person to carry out uh, an uh, ab abortion uh, procedure, for example. However, sometimes if you refer to the legislation, the legislation only specifies only medical practitioner can carry out an abortion procedure. So would nurses fall under that definition? So that's where the judge's rule comes in. And lastly, we have changes in the use of the language uh, because of the modern development. Sometimes how you interpret things in those days would not be applicable as much on how you interpret uh, certain words uh, nowadays. How do judges actually interpret the particular word? So I laid down here four examples. You have a uh, literal rule, golden rule, mischief rule, or purposive approach. So when we talk about the rules of interpretation, it doesn't necessarily mean that judges need to adopt these four rules, or it doesn't mean that uh, judges need to mention in each judgment, okay, I'm going to interpret it based on literal rule. So it doesn't work that way. It's the role of lawyers, law students, academics, researchers to actually decipher or decide or look into the judgment itself and decide on, okay, this is the interpretation using literal rule, a golden rule, mystery rule, or even purposive approach. So let's look at the literal rule first. As the name suggests, literal rule means literally, means that if you want to decide on the definition of a particular term, you actually look at its ordinary meaning, its literal meaning. So the reason is because it's very clear cut. So if you intend to define the word, uh, for example, man, then literally it has to be a man, uh, a gender with the uh, relevant uh, sex description. So you have also here example, what does it mean by uh, voting, for example, or marriage. So court will actually use the literal rule uh, in order to provide a literal definition. You also have an example of golden rule. And golden rule is actually a modification of literal rule. So it's an extent uh, application or interpretation on the particular word or meaning. Because sometimes it's not very clear cut. Uh, as you can see in the examples on the slides, I've put down narrow application as well as wider application. Narrow application means, for example, um, the location itself. So the particular word says in the vicinity of, so then the judges need to decide what does in the vicinity of means, as in case of Adler and George. Do you need to be exactly at that particular case or surrounding that particular place. So that's where narrow application comes in. You need to decide whether you're inside or you're actually nearby. Or golden rule also comes in uh, when we talk about wider application is for the, in order to protect uh, the safety of a citizen. So an example here in the case of Ray Sigworth, uh, it concerns a son uh, who wants to meet up, uh, who has murdered his mother. So now he's wondering if he's entitled to the inheritance. Uh, so in order to provide justice, you can't reward a murderer for the crime that he has committed. So in this case, court will adopt golden rule. Because if you apply literal rule, if uh, the your parents, let's say for example, passed away, so the inheritance will go straight away to the next of kin. That's the literal rule interpretation. 
but you have committed a crime. So the rule, uh, the golden rule applies because even though you're entitled to inheritance, but you will not be rewarded for the crime that you have committed. So that's one example of the application of golden rule. You also have mischief rule. And this rule gives uh, judges more discretion while in terms of the application of a particular word. So how would judges apply mischief rule? So judges need to make sure that they fulfill these four circumstances uh, laid down by the Hayden's case. So you need to decide what was the common law uh, before the enactment of the act. Because nowadays you have an act, but the specific provision that says section one says the particular uh, definition, but it's not clear. So judges need to interpret section one. So whereas when you want to apply mischief rule, is that you need to decide when there's no legislation at all, what was the current position back then. So that's number one. So number two is they need to decide what was the mischief and the fact of common law that the act did not provide, or the, sorry, the common law did not provide. So because of the gaps, that's why the act was enacted. So the third one is what remedy uh, the parliament provide uh, in, the develop, in developing this act. And fourthly, what's the means, uh, what's the means of the remedy uh, and also the application of the act itself. And lastly is what's the true reason for the enactment of the act is to provide what type of remedy. So that's where the mischief rule comes in. Okay, so that's all for today's lecture. So we'll go through in detail in class, but I hope that you have done some reading so you have a better understanding on the areas that we have covered earlier with regards to the purpose of statutory interpretation and how do judges interpret a particular statute. Thank you.